Today, I'm going to be taking on the biggest challenge yet. And this one isn't for the faint-hearted. So if you love satisfying snow foam videos, then boy, are you in for a treat. As you can see, we've got mud absolutely everywhere, but I might even get the citrus pre-wash under there because it's just going to need a little bit extra. But the whole... C <laughs> Who's that pillock? Dad, what are you doing? He watches one episode of Clarkson's Farm and he thinks he's a blimmin' farmer. Anyway, let's jump straight in with the video and get foaming. With the Great British Bake Off music well and truly dead and buried, it's time to get on with the job at hand. And for this, I'll be using my new Karcher K7. Alongside that, I will be using the MTM PF22.2 snow foam cannon. I'll also be using a few brushes and some mud busting products. Normally the first thing I would do is give the entire vehicle a decent rinse with water first. But I really want to show off the cleaning power of the chemicals that I'm going to be using today. So I'm actually going to skip that process altogether just for this video and we're going to kick it straight off with a bit of citrus and then some snow foam. As I started off on the wheels I came to a horrifying realisation. I totally forgot to top up my tyre cleaner, so I'm using my favourite citrus pre-wash for the tyres in an attempt to remove those dried on mud stains which looked like they'd fused into the tyre. What you are witnessing here is my dad proving to the world that yes, when holding 500ml bottles you can use two hands. And that's because not only does it make you look incredibly cool, you also reduce the risk of getting any arm ache. Because of the sheer size of this farm vehicle, I knew it wouldn't be sensible to snow foam it in one hit, so I was doing it in stages to get the best results. And if you think this is satisfying to watch, then make sure you stick around till the end because I will be revealing the most satisfying sound you'll ever hear in your life and it's utterly beautiful to listen to, so I'll save that till the very end. With the first side of the vehicle well and truly dwelled with foam, it was now time to give it its first rinse of the day with the Karcher K7. And as you can see, the combination of a powerful pressure washer and decent chemicals meant the mud was just dropping off. So laying down some citrus before the foaming process definitely gave us an advantage. But we both knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park, so ultimately we weren't looking for perfection at this stage. We just wanted to get the loose muck off so when it came to brushing it, it would make our lives so much easier. And it did. With the first section rinsed off, I could tackle the greasy rear end and right hand side and once again, I'm going to be sticking with Yum Citrus underneath and I'm not spraying it neat here, I'm merely using 20% chemical, 80% water and it's plenty good enough to tackle the first layers. And many of you will probably ask, why am I not using a pump spray on a vehicle like this? And the answer is simple. My other one was broken in two places and pressing the buy now button on Amazon seemed like too much hard work for me. And also I think when you have chemicals in pump sprays, you tend to get quite carried away and you end up using way more than you need. So I guess you could say this is a great way of rationing your chemicals if you do use a trigger bottle. Anyway, back to the task and with the citrus sprayed on, I had to get out the MTM PF22 for the second time today and give the second section a generous coating of snow foam. And what I love about it is the fact that it clings on to whatever surface it touches and it doesn't dry out quickly either. So it's way more forgiving than traffic film remover and it's also safer too. This is one of my favourite bits of the clean, which involves me rinsing off all that beautiful foam and watching the mud just diminish in front of my eyes. And I know people might look at a job like this and think it's stressful, but when you've got quality products it does make your life a lot easier, so there isn't a massive amount of physical graft that's actually needed. 
And if you want to see an entire list of every chemical or equipment used in this video, then I'll put all the links in the description below. And if you want to get 10% off all the chemicals that I'm using in this video, then head on over to yamcars.co.uk and enter the code EPIC at the checkout. With the next stage of rinsing complete, I had to tackle the wheels a little more thoroughly. So I'm using my trusty wheel cleaner and I have no idea what is happening right here. With my dad on the Vicam brush and me on the tyre brush, we got these wheels cleaned up nicely in no time at all. You probably thought it was pointless cleaning the wheels when they have more rust than a brand new Mercedes Benz. But nevertheless, I was ambitious and I still had a job to do. And no matter how bad a vehicle may look cosmetically, you still need to do the task that's required of you, so you can't cut many corners in this business. With those monster wheels taken care of, I now had to rinse the bucket out which had dried clay. So I tried a new tactic with the pressure washer and I did something that I wouldn't normally do to any other car. And that was switching the nozzle to the patio blaster and it may look really slow but the footage is running at 60 frames per second for this video. So you can't see the true speed or power but it did work wonders. Moving on to the contact wash stage and I kept my citrus pre-wash on me wherever I went because no matter how many times I thought I had it under control, I was still missing the odd bit of grease so it made more sense to spray and blast as I was going round it. We started with the cab area with Dad in charge of the wash noodle and me getting the brushes out for the edges. And I even washed the inside of the cabin door too because of the sheer volume of mud on the inside and I do enjoy working on vehicles like this and I never thought I would but because it was in such a state it kind of took the pressure off. The only way to explain it was it was almost like the level of perfection didn't need to be as high because ultimately this would be going back out in a field of mud the following day. So knowing that we could literally just blast the heck out of it and it made a refreshing change. And if you're enjoying this video so far then please do give us a thumbs up and if you want to see more disaster details or transformation videos like this then I'll put a link to some of my favourite videos in the description below. With Dad deciding to go home at this stage, because he had a tummy ache, I had to finish it off on my own and after three hours of cleaning I was starting to slow down so getting another pair of hands is incredibly important if you want to consider cleaning these types of machines for a living. When it comes to getting smear free glass on a beast like this there is only one way it was going to happen. So it's time to get out my flunky and get some glass cleaner on these windows as they hadn't seen any sort of glass cleaner in their entire life. Plus on the lower section of the door the glass was covered in so many scratches and don't forget before this video is finished I'm leaving the most beautiful sound that only a detailer will understand and it is so satisfying. This has been one heck of a challenge. There's been some moments of pure satisfaction and physical and mental stress. But nevertheless, four hours later, we produce results like this.